Hello and welcome to episode 214 of the Rustical Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM Alex Newell. With me today, I have Ben Meredith. Bryn Monroe. Lydia Nicholas. Oh, Helen Gould. Oh. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I'm doing Zolf Smith. Hamid Salah Haroon Al Tahan. Cell side bottom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And as people are going weird, people are going weird. This is your first attempt at the intro, which I'm trying to force now to be in the edit by doing this. (laughs) Hello and welcome to... And then you tripped over yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Ah. Come on, everyone. We've got a dragon to fight. Uh, Okay, it's the tension. Yeah. You've got loads so of hit like, points. I've been fighting against a dragon for the last 200 episodes. Yeah, I've been fighting against myself for my entire life. A dragon's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Just yelling at the dragon, you can't say anything more hurtful than I have already yeah. said to myself. Are you a sea god? Well, piss off, you wha- <laughs> <laughs> so we are on our way, flying invisibly to the top of Big Ben to fight a dragon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like that pretty much sums up the entire campaign in a lot of ways. Uh, Well, actually, we're we're going to the top of Elizabeth Tower because Big Ben is the bell, not the building. Is the top of the bell at the top of the tower? Nearly, there's a point to this. If it's explicitly perched on top of Big Ben. Didn't you know the amplification of the bell's magic Uh, is what will make it work? In the Uh. way this tower is set up, actually, the bell sits on top. They hadn't really worked out... (laughs) How just bells work. It doesn't ring, it's just there. <laughs> just it's like one of those uh, dinner bells that you ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's just a bloke up there with a really big rope being like, oh, it's 12 o'clock, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> 12 o'clock and nothing's well. <laughs> <laughs> Especially my back pain. <laughs> <laughs> See, I go, I'm going to go more Flintstones with it and just get the like, it's a living. <laughs> bong, bong. It's just a T-Rex okay. at the top. Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sort of, by which I mean an enormous golden dragon, which, which segues me in nicely. Oh, yeah. So, an enormous golden interlaced with blue dragon unfolds a wingspan like a 747 and turns its eyes towards presumably where a scrock is. You can't see a scrock, but presumably. And wherever that uh, dragon seems to be looking, the head seems to turn, almost as if someone is veering heavily from a beeline to a skirting kind of direction. With that, that Scrock's turn done. From now on, Bryn, all I will do is occasionally ask you for Scrock scores, <laughs> but I will give you no context for what I'm asking for. Oh, no, that's the worst thing. Mm. He's invisible and he's, he's, he's flying. You, 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 I can't let you know. Oh, the good, the good okay. news is he does have evasion, so there is a chance that they'll take zero damage from dragon breath attacks. They're a rogue. Look, it's handy. Much like all of you, he'll either be fine or dead. Yeah. Yeah. It's an egalitarian peril. (laughs) Speaking of, Azu, you're up. Technically, you and Topaz are up. And for obvious reasons, Ben, your movement will be Topaz's movement until such time as you dismount. That's a sleep off. (laughs) Okay. Uh, We're invisible, right? Yep. You know, let's be specific to remind audience. You are invisible and buffed up to your eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Atop an iron celestial (laughs) flying... Sapient camel. Yes, I believe that's that's it. And also Zolf is there. Oh, and, Zolf, <laughs> and also oh, Zolf, Zolf is there. And you have a you have a backpack of Zolf who has a backpack of baggage. Baggage. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You got the baggage. Uh, so backpack. Gweave has turned their head. Right. Gweave has not yet lifted herself from the tower. The wings are outstretched, but currently the head is just turning and following presumably scrock skirting in a, in an arc. You can see a long extended neck is turning to look. Okay, then Azu is going to whisper to Zolf, when Grieve takes off, we're going to go. Yeah. In which case then, anything else or should I bounce across to... Well, here's a question. Is that a held action with the trigger of I go when Grieve takes off or are you going to wait another round? I mean, from the sounds of it, it sounds like Grieve is literally like on top of where we need to get to. So yes. Azu's like, yeah, so when Grieve leaves that area and gives us a straight shot, and is distracted. We're going to go. Okay, cool. And yeah, to be clear, Guivre is exactly where you need to be and is occupying it with a few ton of reptilian magical flesh. Yeah. yeah. In which case, because you inserted your action, Zolf, technically it's you. I am going to hold my action and insert it when Topaz takes off. Understood. Rather creepily, can I get a perception check from everyone? Are you asking creepily or is the effect creepy? 
<laughs> the effect is creepy, but creepily, you could give me your perception rolls <laughs> that I might see through your eyes and tell you what you must know. I assume that we can stop including Skrark in group things for the time being. You are correct. Functionally, Skrark is gone forever until such time as I decide to grant him back to you. No! I hate you. 25. Uh, I've got a 20. 19. 28. Okay. So for um, Azu and for Cell, Mm -hmm. as you're sort of readying to to leap off, you see any of the blue-skinned, like, uh, veined people who are down at the ground level all stop what they're doing and then turn and look at the exact same spot that Gweave is looking at. Like, unprompted, they haven't heard anything, there hasn't been a noise, they all just turn as one. Zolf and Hamid notice that the non-veined individuals wandering around don't. They seem to start scattering themselves around the area and they seem to be looking elsewhere. Okay, they're not part of the gestalt mind. Mm. In which case then, Cell, you are up. Cell is going to hold their action until Topaz takes off and then they have a plan to jump in the other direction as a distraction. At which point then, Gweave does the following. The first thing that Gweave does is take a deep, deep, deep breath in. <gasps> oh, no. Can I get a reflex save from everyone, please? Oh. Everyone? Oh, no. Oh. oh, including Skrark. All right. Oh. Remember, you're getting plus one from haste. Yeah, but my reflex is really bad still. 21. 29. That's um, a 15 for me. And a 20 for Topaz. Helen, just checking, was that factoring in the plus one Topaz gets from Shield Other? It's a 21 for Topaz. <laughs> it's, it's fine either way. The DC for all of you is quite low. Uh, I'm asking mostly for Skrark with an additional uh, factor for the rest of you. Yeah. Oh. 21 and 25. 25 for Skrark. Ooh, good. Okay, so what proceeds to happen is a deep, deep breath, and all of you have the same idea at the same moment going this is going to be really bright and make a point of turning your eyes away as purest white light just shines out from the top of the bell tower. It is hot from where you are. And it is just like shining out everywhere. That is followed by a sort of shock wave of hot air that rolls through all of you. No one loses their footing or anything as we breathe fire in a massive... 60 foot just it's more like a blowtorch than like it's a hot. cone technically isn't it yeah but what I'm getting at is you know the sort of the movie fire is always a gasoline fire it's really smoky this isn't this is more like a it's like an acetylene torch yeah it's just yeah. like it would melt anything that's in front of it kind of thing yep. and it is not pointed anywhere near you to be clear it's pointed in a completely different direction away from the houses of parliament and sort of out over the city. For the sake of flavour, I'm going to say one of the rooftops is just stripped bare as pieces just fly away from the sheer force of it, at which point Gweave then leaps from the tower and seems to propel herself towards where she uh, breathes flames. Interestingly, it's a very, very big creature, and although it looks like it's flying very, very quickly, it looks like it's not particularly elegant with flight Mm -hmm. that kind of weight throwing itself around isn't particularly nimble this is more a massive massive weight throwing itself and propelling itself through the air by force rather than like through finesse Mm -hmm. and that's i'd say truthfully that's honest to everyone your metaphor of the boeing 747 is pretty apt then yeah honestly it's like you don't you don't turn one of those quickly is what i'm getting at (laughs) at which point I now have a bunch of actions to go off. Yes. Technically, I'm going to go from the front of the initiative order to the back because everyone was holding. So with that in mind, Azu, your thing. You said you wanted to wait till Griever has moved. I'm going to, for the sake of simplicity, say that your readied action goes off, meaning that you're still in the same place in initiative order, but you're now using that move. Okay? Okay. So it was just that you wanted to start towards the tower if Griever left, right? Yes, I was going to leap into the air. You leap into the air and begin your movement. What's the fly speed of Topaz? Topaz has a fly speed of 80. A mere 80. Just. just a mere 80. Just. A mere 160 if you double move, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. In which case then, Zolf, your thing has now gone off. You said you wanted to insert, not a readied action, so you are now inserting your action, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it's not do anything. 
but it's just I'm making sure I'm still acting directly after Topaz. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I, I know what I'm doing there. At which point, then, you start hearing a commotion from within the actual houses themselves. It isn't a specific noise so much as, like, Imagine someone ransacking a building or every room in a building simultaneously and it's a big building. So it's less like there's a massive 400-foot thing ploughing its way through than lots of activity where before there wasn't any. My head immediately inserted the sound of a piano falling for some reason. (laughs) (laughs) Someone just starts throwing xylophones everywhere. We don't know what... No, not that, not that. Uh, I don't want to do that to my editor. They might do that as a joke. I'm like, that's a lot of work. Don't do that. It's okay. (laughs) Sell, you're up. Because the other stuff was kind of flavour. It wasn't a thing. Sure. um, Cell is flying at a speed of 30 feet, but they're double moving. So uh, a a pathetic 60 foot. I Um, think your base fly speed is 30. It will also have been increased by haste. So your your fly speed should now be 60. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, 60. So 120. Yeah. Yep. Cell is going to be... So if you think of... From the Abbey to Elizabeth Tower as a straight line, presuming that now Scrock has gone off at, let's say, the equivalent of about a 45-degree angle because he's swerved off. Yeah, that's about right. And Topaz et al. are doing the straight flight. Uh Um, I should have specified that we are going to double move. Like, we are doing both of those. (laughs) Cell is going to head off in the angle in between. So I had originally gotcha. thought that they would go off in the opposite angle, but actually, basically, it's so if Gweave turns their head, they see Cell first as a distraction before they turn round the whole way. You're to running see interference. Us. Yeah, Aww. I get you. I get you. In which case, then, <gasps> oh, Hamid, so you're now up. There's been a weird shuffle in the initiative order, but I have kept track of it all. You're yeah. now up, Hamid. Hamid is going to fly as well. Uh, Hamid's fly speed is currently ninety. I <laughs> fly speed is 90 so I go a bit faster I'm also not going to take the straightest possible route towards the tower I'm actually going to veer off in a different direction slightly to head over the Houses of Parliament yeah yeah so that's a completely different angle again and if if Grieve decides to turn around I'm going to make a real nuisance of myself at the big plant oh, and yeah. I, mean a, yeah. I mean a real nuisance of myself Alex <laughs> I totally get you. I see where you're going with that. I'm picking up what you're putting down, yeah. and I'm hoping it continues to explode. My rough <laughs> estimate of distances from the top of Westminster Abbey to like the far side of the Houses of Parliament from where Big Ben is, I mm. reckon I can get more or less over the far end in one double move of 180 foot, but I don't know the exact distances. So I have Google Maps. Oh, OK, that's completely wrong. I've got Google Maps in front of me. OK, cool. For flavour, it's built different. <laughs> really? Is that is am I am I just completely wrong about distances here? Just it's it's more like a triangle. All right, all right. But I I think I think in this world it's just no no. Different. It sounds it sounds like what Lydia's saying is that your ideas are bad, Bryn. No, 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 I just I got so happy about like doing the measurement with you the know thing, what, no no you know don't what don't let me do. kill everyone. No no no. I'm now Lit. bringing up. I'm now bringing up the satellite view because I wasn't aware you can measure distances with it and how often do I get the chance to use satellite imagery to assist <laughs> my imaginary game. Our podcast is augmented. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come back in now and go, uh, I'm not sure about your maths there, Bryn. That, uh, yeah. Sounds a little sketchy. I think you might fall a bit short. I completely <laughs> independently came up with this conclusion. I completely independently have decided that I now have an exact satellite measurement that I can use for this encounter. You should have just taken the Google Maps and made it the battle map. Yeah, you can just put a dragon on Big Ben (laughs) and we can... Drop a pin. Are we updating the total (laughs) distance of the straight line to, what, 650, 670, would you say? No, no, no. We're going to say that there was a weird spatial glitch which keeps it at 500 to make the maths easy. Okay. (laughs) Well, I mean, assuming a standard Pythagorean theorem right-angled triangle... Oh, for God's sake. Then if the direct (laughs) hypotenuse route is 500 foot, then I'm going to take the 300 foot bottom so that it puts me 400 foot away from Big Ben but obviously I'm not going to move all that in one turn of course you're not of course he's cracked up the mass language to fight back (laughs) I don't know know how he's done this Wild just flies towards the the tower that's that's what Wild does he just just goes towards the tower in a straight line at which point then 
Skrark's turn. One would imagine, run away. Mystery, yes. mystery, who knows? <gasps> no! Azu, you're up. You have moved 120, was it? 160 feet. 160. Are you going to move another 160? Yes. So it's taking you to 320. You're well on the way there. You are zipping through the sky at that point. Yay! In three moves. And as you're doing so, you see there's a large amount of activity starting at the windows of the Houses of Parliament, the bits that you can see. It's mostly consumed, but there are a few exposed windows, and it looks like they're getting smashed outwards by stuff, but you can't tell what at this kind of Uh speed and this much going on. Going to ignore that. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds awful. You are up because you're paired to uh, Azu's currently. Yeah, I am not doing anything. Okay, cool. At which point then, the stuff coming out the windows, you start seeing what look to be um, some of those, you remember the, the what we used to call the, the clickers in other London and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Seem to be crawling themselves out through the windows and also like semi through the stone and a lot of them seem to be pulling themselves out of the windows. However, every... I'd say Zolf and Azu give me a perception check. Okay. I'm aware Hamid's closer. I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. 20. That's another 20 for me as well. Both of you seem to think that they're heading towards where you get the impression Skrark was and or is, cool. as opposed to climbing the tower or anything like that. Grant. At which point then, Gweave shoots out further in the direction that Gweave was flying, but seems to be having a really hard time when it comes to direction. I'm fluffing this up for flavour a little bit, because technically I could just trace a bunch of straight lines, but, you know, with theatre of the mind here. <laughs> you get the impression that Skrark's probably still moving around, given that the head's still going, and is using a lot of manoeuvrability in a way that's making life really difficult for Gweave. Lots of sharp turns, sudden drops, oh, sudden yeah. climbs. The head is all over the place, and it's it basically it's really struggling to sustain that kind of nimbleness. That twenty-two fly skill coming into play. Yay! Uh, yeah, absolutely. Also, for anybody who's big worried, remember Scrog got a twenty-five on on their DC, so that either means they took no damage, or if they failed, they still took half damage. I think because they got greater evasion, right? And if it's fire, you still it, put it the, is. It is the fire, fire, and I really doubt Grieve does two hundred and forty points of damage, even being a dragon, because that is absurd. So. <laughs> probably still has temporary hit points up so that's one of the reasons that i get nervous because i don't actually know what is or is not reasonable (laughs) damage i'm doing doing a big guess because obviously dragons (laughs) at this point are a little bit into like hey they can kind of do what they want yeah yeah Yeah. well we'll see yeah i mean there's some wonderful entries not just in pathfinder in a lot of DD games as well where it's just like dragons are meant to be special if you don't think this is special enough just give them a bunch more extra stuff (laughs) make them more special Cell, you are up. Currently, Grieve appears to have used the entire turn just to do movement in a series of seemingly random directions, but this. drawing away. Uh, well, I mean, Cell's just going to keep moving. Like They're going to keep going in a straight line because even if they are pursuing an angle that is halfway between the straight line to Big Ben and the straight line towards where Skrark was, then eventually they're going to overshoot Big Ben. But that is fine. They're not going to quite get there yet this turn, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So they're keeping on going. Yep. Hamid, you are up. Okay, so I reckon, by my maths, a second move of 180 feet can take me to more or less over the south end of the Houses of Parliament. That seems more reasonable to me. Yeah, yeah. and I'm going to use the... If we're calling it 300 in that direction, I'm going to use the final little bit of move left over from uh, to, to gain more height. So I'm going to be, you know, maybe 30 foot above the top of the Houses of Parliament on the south end. So I'm still sort of 400 foot-ish from Big Ben, but over the Houses of Parliament, reasonably high... So you are now well over the plant that's occupying most of the Houses of Parliament. So the actual structure of the Houses of Parliament is pretty much entirely subsumed. The plant itself is higher than the Houses of Parliament. Oh. So that height is still... It's still serving you well, basically. Um, But you're at the point where you can see there is a deep, pulsing blue glow coming from within the plant because you're sort of looking down almost through the closed bud. And you can see that there is a deep throbbing blue glow uh, that seems to be accelerating in its pulsing. Okay. Additionally, you can see there are a few non-blue-veined people sort of 
wandering around upon the roof, the bits of exposed rooftop that there are. They seem very, very confident, given that they're very high, and just wandering around on rooftops. You also see there are a couple of those rooted creatures that seem to be still more patrolling rather than climbing. It genuinely looks like nothing's currently moving towards the tower and everything is currently focusing more on the plant. Great. Okay. Wild continues to do what Wild does, which is my business. Thank you very much. (laughs) Uh, They do what they do. Okay, at which point... Uh, So bear in mind as well, Alex, that just uh, Wild's fly speed right now will be 90 foot because it's the fly spell plus haste that's giving them that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that uh, should be realistically within the next turn or so, Wild's there. Yeah, so Wild will be slightly faster than Topaz. Yeah, that's fine. Um, But Wild's not there yet. At which point then, can I get one more perception check from everyone? But if you don't roll high, you're getting nothing. It's not one of those ones where I'll, I'll limit information. 19. <laughs> 14. 19. 23. Nah, nothing high enough. Yeah, that's a bad set of rolls. Yeah, yeah. Azu, your movement. I'm assuming you're still going in the straight line. Absolutely. I've been given a task. I shall accomplish it. In which case you're at what, 360? 480 total after three. Yes, I'm almost there. Oh. Oh, I'll tell you what then, you know what you can do? I'm going to allow you to be on the battle map because there's a little (gasps) bit of space around the clock tower. You have earned yourself the right, nay the honour, nay the privilege (laughs) of being on a battle map. Okay. And I am going to say for the sake of ease that you are coming in from the bottom left corner, so... Okay. Which is about 20 feet off the clock tower currently. And me... (laughs) No, no, somehow you lost Zolf on the way. Oh, no, I can't <laughs> over. I'll fall down. Zolf, fall down. No! <laughs> no I'm, just, I'm just floating in the middle of the thing, unable to propel myself, being like, because uh, I'm not going down because I've got levitation boots, but I can't do anything with it. <laughs> just throwing random pieces of equipment yeah, in the wrong yeah. direction for the uh, motion. I can throw Babbage and not break him. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to rely on Azu's reflexes to catch him, which... Yeah. Mm. Wah, 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 wah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, technically then Wild is going to be in the map as well and be about there, I'd say. Okay. Next round, obviously. Okay, cool. In which case then, Zolf, are you doing anything other than be flown? Uh, I am doing a perception check because I want to get the lay of the land. I want to make a plan because, so for your benefit, I've got stone shape. So my initial idea is to block any access to this roof. Mm-hmm. I know they can climb, but it'll it will stop us from being like overwhelmed with like things running out of door upstairs. I see on the map, there is some stone steps, but I know this is maybe not perfectly accurate to what you want to do, but I don't know. Honestly, I'm using this map as the rule. Cool. Give me the perception roll first, and then I'll give you some description. That is a 20. Oh, nice. Okay, so it is heavily balustraded on all four corners. There's lots of overlap and so on. Mm-hmm. I'm saying for the sake of my ease... I am aware that the reality of the clock tower in the UK is a very, very steeply angled uh, sort of rooftop thing. Mm. This is going to be a lot flatter for my they purposes. Remodeled. They remodelled. Yep. Yeah, sure. Tesla blew the roof off it. <laughs> <laughs> so as a result, the ground itself is sloped because it is sort of roofing tiles, mm-hmm. but it is, it is still traversable. Yep. And in the middle, there's a large sort of glass roofed element to it. Think sort of Victorian wrought iron, you know, with the sort of paned glass style that like you get in old stations, things like that. Yep. Yeah. So you can look down into the innards of it where there is an elaborate mechanism held within the centre of the tower, but you can navigate around it on all sides. There is a big stone staircase that leads up towards the sort of rooftop itself. Yep which has a door that appears to have been either kicked in or wedged open or whatever, so it looks like you could go down into the clock tower proper. Mm-hmm. And there is a fairly sizable platform in the middle of the glass up at the top, which looks like a solid place to you know, set down for the apparatus. Yep. In terms of defences around the place, there's a significant amount of plant matter kicking around, but you're not seeing any watcher plants yep. like you had in Svalbard. Good. And any guardians that we were talking about you know those root creature things are not currently at this level there they're lower down and sort of navigating around so important question that i'm trying to infer because i know i'm on the other side of the clock tower but how deep is the staircase is it like as it looks from the map it's 15 foot wide but at the point where it goes underneath the roof it's 15 foot deep with a double door where one of the doors is closed and the other one is how big is the doorway so the doorway is a standard double doorway, 10 foot by 10 oh. foot. Yes. 
Because <laughs> <laughs> that is the amount that I can cover with a wall of stone. <laughs> nice. Yeah, okay, so all of, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Babbage's headphones and put yep. them so that I've got one ear on and one ear off. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Um, and I'll be like... Proper cool guy headphones yes. in there, by oh, the yeah, way. Yes, I'm excellent. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm podcasting. <laughs> when everybody, this is Elf Smith, we're at the top of the Elizabeth Tower, we're going to save the world. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but um, and I'm going to say to Azu, uh, drop me off next to the staircase. So I can block it up. We'll do. And uh, and then to Babbage, because I've got my six seconds. Right, we're getting in the way of uh, getting to Elizabeth Tower. Where's the best place to put you on the roof? Like right at the top. Yep. Good. And that's probably my turn. That's my my stuff. Yep. In which case, then anyone who can see the sides of the tower can see that the sort of root creatures are pouring out from the exposed windows and pulling themselves out from amongst the plant matter and are seemingly swarming, although the vast majority seem to be heading in the same direction of we've a decent amount seem to be in a more holding pattern, let's say. A few of them seem to be working their way up now, starting to work their way towards the tower, but they do not appear to be beelining, but this really is, from your perspective, like a disturbed anthill. Okay. Gweave takes another deep breath and seems to be aiming at a building. So I don't mean in the sky, I mean at a building a little bit further on. Okay. Breathes in, breathes out, and again, can I get a reflex save from everyone, including Skrark? Okay. 25. That is a 23 for me, and a 21 for Topaz. 28 for Skrark? Yes, Bryn. Yes. But only 16 for Hamid. No, Bryn. (laughs) 16 for Cell. Oh. Okay, cool. So for everyone who's in the air, because I've set this DC very, very low, again, you do get a moment of and cover your eyes just before there's any kind of blinding effect. However... The building that Gweave was aiming at is is wiped from the face of the earth. We're talking fully glassed. All of it, the whole lot from top to bottom. I am now going to roll a lot of dice, so bear with me. Oh, God. He could be only getting half. He could be only getting half, and he's got 120 hit points. So with the building just completely obliterated... Gweave still seems interested in the obliterated building rather than uh, anywhere else. That's a good sign, right? Yeah. That's yeah. a really good sign. Skrog. It's like we've been like, job well done. Skrog, be okay! And on that possibly good note, oh. I'll take a break there. Hello, listener. It's Helen here, and I'm going to tell you about a new show on the RQ network called The Town Whispers. This folk horror podcast excels in atmospheric, dark storytelling as it explores the hidden tales of a foggy town called The Fort. As the story goes on, it begins to uncover the sinister workings of a mysterious group of entities called The Long Shadows, who seem to hold sway over the town. Tune in each week to find out what becomes of the people living in The Fort and the terrifying plans that have been in motion since the first town boundaries were drawn. If you're a fan of horror movies like Midsummer and The Witch, you should search for The Town Whispers wherever you listen to your podcasts. Or visit www.rustyquill.com for more information. Happy listening. And welcome back. Cell, you're up. You just saw a dragon eliminate another chunk of prime real estate. Uh, Cell's going to keep moving towards the tower, aiming to come in, yeah, on the corner that is closer to Grieve and, I suppose going to help folks with the theatre of the mind uh, if you've got the long rectangle that is the house of parliament with the tower on the end cell is at the furthest end slightly slightly further forward Zolf Azu and Topaz are coming in the middle uh, the lower corner of the tower and Hamid's off at the bottom of the house of the parliament Topaz Topaz is approaching from the uh, southwest corner Yep. Cell has arced round to approach from the northwest corner, and yep. Hamid is off far to the south. Yeah, oh, look at you managing that in one sentence when I struggled a lot. Okay, in which case then, can I ask what's the total distance you've travelled so far, Cell? They have travelled 
360 foot. Okay, you are, because you're taking a little bit of an arc, I'm going to say you're not quite on the map yet, but mm-hmm. you will basically smash onto the map next time. <laughs> um, and I hope everyone case, is remembering to tick down all of their round mm-hmm. counted spells. In which case then, Hamid, you are up. Hamid takes a, having hit the corner that he was flying over, Hamid doesn't think, he can only estimate because he can't see and he's out, currently out of message range to keep talking to everyone but he's mm-hmm. estimating that people will be about to land on the tower so he doesn't want to reveal himself yet so instead he's going to fly north 180 foot yep. which will put him about 220 foot from uh, Big Ben mm-hmm. and while he's doing that he's just going to be whispering please be okay, please be okay, please be okay, please be okay oh, How not very f- sneaky now <laughs> He's whispering. I whispering. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if they've got supersonic hearing. Uh, okay. At which point, then, I am going to say that it is, because this is accurate, Wild's turn. And Wild, I think, is going to be making contact. Yep. <gasps> Wild is. So Wild is going to place himself at the south end. No. Wild is going to. Wild is going to make it. to the north west corner of Big Ben and is seemingly has 100% of his attention fixed on Gweave. Okay. And I'm going to leave it at that. Interesting. Big illusion time. Big illusion time. Yeah. In which case then... Ooh, yes, I need to do a roll. Can I please get a fortitude save from Skrark with no context? A fortitude save? Oof. Correct. Oh. I don't like that though, Alex, is the thing. I don't. Oh. I'd really rather you didn't. <laughs> Small lizard friend. Does this, this, this happen to be a sleep or paralysis effect, or, or a poison, or a fear effect, or a trap? I effect? suspect that Skrark is very afraid, but it is not a fear effect. Okay, so that is eighteen. That could have been worse. Okay, cool. Thank um, you. Good luck, lizard boy. And can I get a strength check from Skrark as well? Absolutely <gasps> not. <laughs> Oh, I think he might be buried in something. Uh, yeah, that feels like the I'm trapped in a building. Oh, dear. That's okay. He's small. He can crawl somewhere. Actually, can I get either, because this is technically accurate, can I get a strength or escape artist check? You can now absolutely have escape artist. Yes. I'm happy to give you yeah. some escape artist. Running, running the figures, you're, yeah. Yeah, it should be escape artist. Yep. That technically comes under it. <laughs> well, I didn't roll well, but that is still a value of... 19. Okay. Dragon uh, baby! <laughs> in which case then, Azu, you are up. You are on the battle map where you actually are. Bear in mind that wherever you go, you're going to be hoiking a uh, Zolf along for the ride. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what Zolf asked and I'm going to drop drop Zolf off at the, the staircase bit where he mm-hmm. said he wanted to be. So the staircase is on the north side of the tower. Yes. And I remind yep. people, this is not accurate. That would be foolish. Yeah, we've got. I've got no idea what Big Ben this, looks like. This world's yeah. Big Ben has a staircase on the north side yes, of the tower does. at the top. A nice, <laughs> yeah. big, sizable one. I think real world Big Ben just has like a maintenance gantry and a very highly pitched roof. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And, this um, is far more fancy. And Alex, you said that there was a platform at the top of the dome that looked like a good place to put the brawb. Yeah, yeah. Which is currently strapped to Zolf's back. Yeah. But the thing is, Helen, have you used both your moves to get there? But but Topaz can do all this movement while Azu oh, yes. takes Azu the isn't actually doing that's that. what I was about to say. Backpack from Zolf. Yeah. So you'd have used a double move to get there with Topaz, but you could now hop off and use your own move. But I will point out that because it's sort of glass on all sides, and for the sake of the map, climbing up just the glass to get to the middle platform will be quite difficult. There is a metallic walkway to the east and west side of it, okay. which you could walk up and is, like, walkable, but if you're trying to just walk up the side of the glass, you, 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 you're asking for trouble. Okay, hang on. I think I can get onto the walkway, but not to the platform. Yeah, the, the other I'll thing take is that. we're invisible, so you probably can't easily take Babbage from me. Yeah. So we can't see each other. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rule that you can't just be like, here it is. Doesn't doesn't really work like that. The, I think the thing is, Helen, the way I think this is gonna work with my movement speeds and my ability to levitate and stuff, it, you might as well leave it on me. Okay, he'll get there at the same time that you will. Basically, you can you can just land, drop Zolf off, and then take back to the skies. You're yeah. probably more yeah. useful flying and swinging an axe than on I the was ground. About, in which case, I will. Okay, then I have dropped Zolf off 
and uh, I'm hanging around. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Hanid, from your spot, you can notice that a bunch of the sort of root guardian things are now starting to work their way up the tower. You can see that there's a few inside, like you can just see through the odd window and so on, and you can see that there are a couple trying to make their way up the outside of the tower as well. They are not hoarding, to be clear, although the ground floor is now awash with these things, all looking in all directions, all... Yeah. Like clicking and chittering all over one another. They are very much focused on sort of ground level and just a few are currently climbing up the tower. Yeah. Gweave, meanwhile. Uh, do I not get go? Uh, of course you do. That was a test. <laughs> Pass the test. <laughs> oh, well I miss done. it. I miss you you deserve test. to be in combat. Zolf, it's your turn. Enjoy it. Okay. Luxuriate in it. So I can. Cover my errors. I can dismount as a bonus action, right? Or do I just factor it into my move? Like, I don't know. I think it's part of a move action, probably. It's part of your move, yeah. I, I believe, in My move system. is 40 foot. I, I step off into air. Go, go, boots, go. <laughs> <laughs> I float down. Yep. My standard action is I cast shape stone. Yep. I uh, stone shape using the stone in the stairs to create uh, one foot by one foot bars, which I then crisscross across the oh, doors. Oh, like a portcullis. Yeah, like a portcullis, as much as I possibly can. Uh, I can do yep. 21 cubic foot, so I guess I can do... I don't know. You're fine. So. There's, there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot there. I'm not, yeah. I'm not especially worried by that. Also, bear in mind that one of the doors was closed, so you might be able to like work in a wedge or whatever to make use of some of the existing door. Oh, yeah, basic, basically, works. I do what I did with the the gate previously, yeah. and just like mm. consume the door so that it, even yeah, yeah. if part of it still would, it's all held up by the stone, so it's all yeah. You know, that's it's all that's absolutely fine. That's fine. Cool. Anything else with your turn? Uh, I've done it. I've used my move action. I've used my standard action. Understood. In which case, then oh, I, my glaive goes on. Fire. <laughs> it's it's still invisible because I haven't been aggressive. Yes. At which case then, <laughs> the ambient lighting slightly increases, but no one knows why. Yeah. <laughs> Can everyone please give me a stealth check? Ooh, you might get lucky on this. We're all still applying the invisibility bonus of plus yeah. 20. 27. 30. Remember, you have a re-roll on it from the boots if you are wearing those specific boots. Yes, I'm going to re-roll that. I'm definitely going to re-roll that. Yeah, you don't have to be actually on the ground for them to activate, which is fun. Yep. Okay, that is 41 now. (laughs) Thank you for reminding me of that. (laughs) I've got 49. 46 for Hamid. In which case, Gweave finishing, like, hovering, and I say hovering implying, like, static as opposed to the massive... Wing beats that are like scattering insect sized people all the way back down there and so on. Starts surveying the area and as it does so, notices something and then turns the head straight at the tower. Now, here's a question. Yes. Unless they are using preternatural senses and I'm the one who failed my stealth check, I am currently in a divot which will break line of sight between me and Gweave. Interestingly, it's Azu because of the divot. Hot damn! Wow. Well, it, if 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 Grieve doesn't suffer from the invisibility uh, bonus, then all our get... rolls were uh... twenty less. And that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm at the risk of like popping behind the curtain. Yeah, dragons are real good at spotting when people are full of nonsense. They don't like hobbits, and they're really good at spotting when nonsense is happening. Then <laughs> fair play. But interestingly enough, hasn't noticed the halfling. <laughs> um, but Grieve seems very don't seems worry, to have he's, noticed. He's about to notice the halfling. <laughs> <laughs> Grieve seems to have uh, Grieve seems to have noticed Azu. Basically, I'm oversimplifying a little bit, but seems to have noticed someone at the clock tower. However, mm. I am ruling that Grieve is going to have used their turn to do so because it's an active perception check as opposed to a passive one, mm-hmm. which uses a standard action. And the movement they used hovering, doing a quick check, a passive search of the building. So as a result, Cell, you are up and technically are sort of between Grieve and the tower. But if I recall correctly, quite a long distance from Grieve, right? About 120 feet, about 120 feet between you and Grieve. So bombs, unfortunately, really only have a range of 20 foot. While they could hit Grieve with their crossbow, (laughs) it's just... It's like, you know, you want to throw your your life away for a good arena, <laughs> not, like, not like a D4. You worked know? in The Hobbit, worked in The Hobbit. You know what? You're, you're not wrong, um, but no. I'll tell you what, if you were to take ten turns perceiving Grieve for a weak spot, I'd definitely try and give you something. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what the stalking dagger's about, though, right? Um, oh, true, I, very true. Having, having done 
a bit of the maths. Uh, there is nothing Cell can do of use, so they are going to move a another. It's really hard to to try and explain. Um, but imagine there's the tower. Grieve is directly north of it. I know that's not quite right. Cell is aiming to be at a kind of triangular point off to the west so that if they do something big and sparkly and dangerous it kind of draws the eye away from the tower but they can't really do it yet yeah i'm with you okay in that case then hamid you are up okay so hamid is still about 220 foot south of big ben yep his single move speed is about 90 foot uh-huh. So he's going to fly about 50 foot north and then use the rest of his move to get more height. Uh-huh. And then, thinking that he really needs to give both Grieve and the, the monsters that are starting to swarm the base of the tower something else to uh, think about, he grips off his belt, pulls it into his hand, the runes start to glow, the rod of Maximize. <laughs> 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 Now, I'm still Bad. over the body of the Houses of Parliament, and you said there's a few oh, yeah. people there that are not yeah. technically blue-veined and look almost coordinated in some brain, in some way. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they look... Uh, they look lieutenanty. is yeah. what they look. Uh, <laughs> would you say any of them are sort of clustered quite close to each other? <laughs> uh, I'd say there's, there's a bunch of maybe five or so clustered right at a point where the plant meets the houses quite nicely. Okay, Hamid's invisibility pops into nothingness as a maximised fireball lands right in the middle of them. Uh, Fireball has a range of uh, 840 foot, so I'm not really worried about whether I can uh, get them. And it's maximised, so that is uh, 70 fire damage to all those people. They do get a reflex save. The thing that's interesting here is... Technically, I should roll for them all differently, but we've done this previously where I roll en masse because it, it's a bit more swingy. The thing that's interesting is less to do with what happens to those people and a lot more to do with what happens near those yeah. people. So you hurl your fire... I say hurl, it technically it's a little pee that then explodes, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like... <laughs> Boom! Uh, so there's an enormous explosion on the roofs of Parliament, and as it does so, a few things happen simultaneously first is a huge section of the roof just implodes it, it just it just collapses inwards it's an old building and that's a very big explosion secondly as it does so it reveals that the interior of the the houses are almost is almost entirely plant matter mm. but loose plant matter not one big single thing mm-hmm. so it, it goes kind of it implodes but in a kind of spongy way i guess <laughs> in addition to that the plant though the main body the main bud is within sort of range of that takes some damage at which point, could everyone please give me a will save? Oh, uh, oh no. Is this against fear or poison? It is against fear. Everybody gets a plus four instead of a plus one due to the hero's feast. Ooh, wonderful. That might tip it over, actually. Yeah. <laughs> because Cell's will is trash. So. Natural 20. Nice. Cell's is 24. 30. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do I need to roll for Skrark as well? Uh, yes, you do. Well, Yay, that that's means he's still sign, alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good sign. Oh, no, I'd, I'd continue to get you to roll even if he wasn't. <laughs> Give me a second, because I'm just trying to find out if I am default immune to fear. But by your level, you're immune yes. to fear and immune to disease, I think. so. Yeah, at third level, is a paladin is immune to fear, magical or otherwise. There and there you go. And there you go, yep. So, so you I'm don't fine. need to roll. You have transcended dice in this particular encounter. <laughs> <laughs> and what was what was Skrark's? Uh, well, I rolled a natural 20 for Hamid and a 19 for Skrark, so that was a good pair. So Skrark's total, sadly, is only 27. Okay, cool. And what was Hamid's one more time? Because I think this is all good. Well, the natural 20 means the total is 36, by my reckoning. Good wow. Goodness. So, there is a sudden screaming cry that seems to come from everywhere at once. And then you realise it is coming from everywhere at once. As every single creature that you can see, whether upon a building, whether on the ground, whether blue-veined or not, apart from yourselves, throws their head up in the air and screams for a moment. It is a very loud, very painful sound to hear and very, very unnerving and carries with it a magical pressure upon the mind. 
I'm afraid everyone apart from Cell takes it hey, and handles it. <laughs> <laughs> takes it does not mean the that indignation you're you meant. Phrasing there, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Quiet. You quiet. You quiet. All Cell of you. Cell gets the wibblies. Cell has mechanical wibblies. And Cell is now shaken. Uh oh. For. Oh, don't make me useless in the final battle, Alex. For four rounds. No, you're not, you're not staggered. What that is is uh, you're taking a minus two penalty on attack rolls, saving throws, skill checks, and ability checks. You are not frightened or panicked because you rolled high enough that you're only shaken. So for four rounds, you're taking a minus two on stuff, basically. That's not good. Yeah. But this isn't an effect that's going to get worse if not treated, right? No, mm. no. This cool. was just a, well, that was weird, because the scream does stop. It doesn't just go on and on and on and on. It's this thing was hurt, and then everyone goes, ah! And in terms of the plant itself, blue light starts sort of shining out from it, as if you had, like, a a, a light bulb in a vase, and then you smashed it a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's shining out from it. You can already see, though, Hamid, the plant itself is starting to knit itself back together. Wow. But it is a very odd sensation to hear an entire city scream at once. It's fine. I was, I was attracting attention, doing minor damage. Gweave also is screaming at the same point and then turns wholeheartedly to look somehow, despite the scale and somehow despite the distance, Right into Hamid's eyes. Oh! Done, done, done. And I'll end the episode there. Oh! Cousin <laughs> Bryn! I, I, think, I think he might be the bigger dragon, you guys. Mm. Yeah. I think you may have picked a we'll fight. S- this, is not, have this picked... is not a contest of dominance I'm going to uh, win. Do you know what, Hamid? <laughs> do you know what, Hamid? We'll see about that. You've got backup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plush got loads of hit points. It's fine. Um... You got that's not how I would characterise it. You got a few. I've got I've got some. I've certainly got more <laughs> than before. Yeah. So you know that's nice. That's nice. And and on that, than I, I, let, let's why don't we find out and leave the audience guessing? Yeah. But uh, I'm going to call a by extra 132 <laughs> hit points, and he's still on. Oh, because he, he can't do it. <laughs> he's right to be afraid. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 international license. Today's episode was directed by Alexander J. Newell and produced by Hannah Preisinger. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Patreon, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, visit us on Facebook, or email us via mail at RustyQuill.com. Join our community on the Discord or via Reddit at r slash RustyQuill. Thanks for listening. which has a door that appears to have been wedged open. Uh, oh, Hello. Dear. Oh, no, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I just wanted to move the camera and I did a bad job of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Being... I'm gonna... Whoa. I'm not with this. <laughs> <laughs> Little roller coaster Fight, Lydia, fight! <laughs> Go for the eyes! <laughs> the ch- I really... I just wanted to look... The chickens are normal. in the house. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the walls, man. They're in the walls. <laughs> okay, I just I just wanted you to be able to see my face. But, oh, that's not going to happen.